none of us know what to expect from Manchester United this weekend, or maybe we do. So many of us are going to be going into that game expecting a defeat against Spurs after what we've seen last week against Liverpool. And the week of the build-up, Solskjaer it seemed like he was going to get sacked on Monday. Then there was a big U-turn on Tuesday. The club's given the support to Solskjaer. Does he have three games to save his career? Or is he only getting those three games because Manchester United's board are incompetent and need to make a plan now? In my opinion, it's the latter. I don't really think these results, these next three results are going to change Solskjaer's future. But maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, then these three next games are crucial. And regardless of what happens with Solskjaer, whether he stays or whether he leaves, these three games are crucial for United. Currently eight points off top. If we lose against Spurs and City, we could be 14 points off top going into that international break in November. We have to stop the rot at some point. Can it be stopped at Spurs this weekend? That's the big question. And who will Solskjaer play after what was such an, an, an abomination of a performance from everybody, really, against Liverpool? I'm going to run through my predicted 11 in this game. I'm going to run through my preferred 11 in this game. And there's so many questions you can ask about so many individuals. Please drop a like on the video if you are new to United People's TV and subscribe as well. But let's get into this conversation about United's team and who will start against Spurs. And of course, we're starting in defense. And from what we've seen all season long, I mean, look at these stats, these defensive stats. Manchester United have got one clean sheet in the last 20 games. We're quite literally bottom of the Premier League in keeping clean sheets. And that game against Liverpool, we saw almost a new level of, of crapness from United's defense. For the first goal, for the second goal, for the third, fourth and fifth, everybody honeypot football. It seemed like Manchester United players didn't know when to press and when not to press as a collective unit. Maguire getting pulled out of shape, Shaw getting pulled out from the left. Salah was in acres of space. Cater was in acres of space. It was embarrassing watching United defend against Liverpool, quite frankly. But I don't really think there's going to be that many changes in terms of personnel. If, if this game is, is what Solskjaer needs to have to save his career I, I personally don't believe that narrative i don't think it's in his hands anymore i think it's been taken out of his hands with that 5-0 defeat to liverpool but if it is i don't think he's going to move away from who he trusts and that's De Gea, sure Maguire. i'm putting varan in because it looks like varan's going to be fit he might not be we'll see in the press conference if he's not fit it's going to be lindelof there quite simple and wan bissaka now out of that back five it's going to be harry Maguire who is receiving the most scorn because as a captain he hasn't really perform like a captain, like a Manchester United captain, and we want them to, sort of leading by example, leading vocally, uh, everything uh, Maguire isn't doing really. And it's quite shocking how bad United's defensive organisation has become. Even if the coaching is that bad, a player who is quality should be able to marshal it and improve it on the pitch, right? And yeah, you, you, you can argue it's down to uh, instructions from the manager, X, Y, Z, but I refuse to believe that Top quality defenders will just listen to crap coaching if they're going to be bad at defending. And United, as I said, pulled out of shape completely against Liverpool for every single goal, man. It's, it's awful. Luke Shaw equally as poor this season. It's really bad. Varane, my God, we missed him. Uh, but even with him, we weren't keeping clean sheets. So Varane's not the answer. And Wan-Bissaka, uh, Wan-Bissaka's just been Wan-Bissaka. I wouldn't say he's, he's got as much um, vitriol towards him as the rest of the defence. De Gea's obviously in goal. There's no real questions about that. And he's be, probably been one of our best players this season and we're constantly conceding. It's ridiculous, but I don't think there's going to be too many changes there. Do you think he's going to drop Harry Maguire? Personally, I don't think so. I think if he's, I think it's reached a point, if this is a do or die game for Solskjaer, let's say it is. I think he's reached a point now where I said he was going to, he was going to die on the hill of the McTominay and Fred if he stuck with it. And he, has to, and he had stuck with it and he's died on it. And I don't think now he's going to change anything with Maguire. If he was going to drop Maguire, it would have been after Leicester, but he didn't. Obviously, he played against Atalanta. He scored, but he still didn't play that well. And then he played in the game against Liverpool, and it was an abomination. I don't think he's going to change much in that back five. Do you think he will, and do you think he should? You let me know what you think in the comments below. But let's talk about midfield next. And before I do move on to midfield, big shout out to One Football for supporting United People's TV. A bit like I'm, a bit unlike Manchester United Football Club, really supporting us right now with the way they're playing. But One Football, you know by now that I'm genuinely a big fan of the One Football app. That's why I love doing these integrations if you don't have the app downloaded there's a link in the description it's free to download all your one-stop shop that's why it's called one football it's literally all your football in one place nicely named uh, all the latest manchester united news all the pre-match build-up ahead of this game against spurs all the match reaction that will come after it all the latest season stats about players all the latest transfer news as and when that happens 
It's all going to be covered on the One Football app. So I would encourage you to go and download it. There is a link in the description. It's free to download and it will help United People's TV if you go over there and support and show your love for One Football. And I deserve it. So as I said, link in the description. Go and follow it over there. But look, if, if, there, are, if there are questions about the defense, then geez, there's questions about midfield. And this is what I've been repeating in all of my predicted 11 shows this season, right? And in midfield, there really are just continued questions all season long. Fred and McTominay. Solskjaer stuck with them all season, man. Even when the, the cries got louder and louder and louder and louder, they started. And I think they're going to start here again against Spurs. Now, Paul Pogba is obviously suspended. He's missing the next three domestic games, so he's not involved in there. You could put Matic in there if you wanted to. We saw how slow and immobile really Matic was against Leicester. Then you could put Van der Beek in there, but he's not put Van der Beek in there all season. Why is he going to do it now? As much as a lot of us would want that to happen, I don't think it's going to happen. And I would say one thing about Fred and McTominay, right? I know they've got their limitations, but Manchester United are making it as difficult as possible for them to play well. With this 4-2-4 formation that we're seemingly going with right now, we're pressing incessantly. Bruno Fernandes is great, but he's a little bit chaotic. I think we can all admit that. Uh, and he does end up being more of a second striker than a supporting third midfielder for a lot of the time, which means Fred and McTominay find themselves overloaded two on three a lot of the time. You can't play like that. If, if you're playing two on three, you're invariably you're going to lose it. Simple as that. It's a numbers game. So Fred and McTominay, as much as I, I do know they are limited as footballers, I do know that we could be playing a better central midfield. I don't think Manchester United's formation really helps them in any way, shape or form. And they will get overloaded again against Spurs if the same thing happens. So Bruno has to be a bit more disciplined, drop deep and try and make that into a midfield three instead of a 4-2-4. Should be a 4-2-3-1, not a 4 2 4 and that's the, that's, That goes down to desire to sort of make a difference, but running around like a headless chicken doesn't always make that difference. But that's the midfield I think that he's going to play against Spurs. And the front three, behind Ronaldo, I'm going for Rashford, Bruno and Sancho. Now, could every player be dropped after that Liverpool game? Yes, they could. But I am bored of seeing Jadon Sancho on the bench. What is the point of spending two years chasing a player of Sancho's quality and then not bloody playing him? I don't get it. I really don't get it. It's pointless. He's our top target. If he was our top target, he was part of a plan, a systematic plan. He slots in perfectly. And he does slot in perfectly at right wing, but we just don't play him. It's madness. Play him at right wing, Ollie. Please, for the love of God, play Sancho at right wing. I've had enough of asking for it. Now I'm begging. And if this is really is your sort of like do or die three games, put him in there. Rashford on the left wing. Uh, Rashford came out this week sort of like saying that he was embarrassed and that's why he didn't really tweet after the game. And I think Rashford was hurting from that, man. And I, I don't know well, he should be. Every single one of those goddamn players should be hurting because I know I was. And I know I still am. And I know a lot of us. Well, Liverpool fans won't let United... Fans, ever forget that result. It's going to be a stain for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. Won't ever let us forget that. But Rashford, I think he'll start on that left wing. I think it'll be Bruno through the middle. And as I said, I'm not isolating or scapegoating Bruno here, but Bruno has the capability more than most players in that side, that team, of changing the game, changing the tempo of the game, changing the start of the game. He's the leader in, in, in terms of his energy on the pitch, in terms of his positions on the pitch. Bruno's the architect in the middle that we need to link that midfield and link the attack. And without him, or without him just running off like a kid who's just had his first can of Coke and he's excited, he's got to expend all this energy. That cappuccino before bed at 11, Bruno, might not be doing you the best service. But Bruno's got to be disciplined. Use that energy correctly here against Spurs. And he's just a wonderful player. But as we've seen the last few games, if he doesn't do that and he just, the press is sort of broken. You've got Bruno who wants to press incessantly and you've got Ronaldo who wants to sort of do the complete opposite. And if you, you, the press doesn't work if you don't do it all together. So Bruno has to sort of reduce that part of his game and make himself more work smarter, not harder, right? That's something I've always stood by. And Bruno right now, the last few games, is working harder, not smarter. He needs to switch that around against Spurs. And Ronaldo up front. Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. If we don't get him the ball in and around the box, he will not score. He will not track back, and I don't expect him to track back. I don't want him to track back. He is one of the greatest goal scorers of all time, if not the greatest goal scorer, certainly of our generation. So don't come at me saying he doesn't work hard enough, Sam. I don't care if he works hard enough. He bangs in goals. If you put in crosses like Shaw did against Atalanta, he will bang in the headers. We simply have not been delivering, and that's another big reason I'm so pissed off that Sancho has not been playing right wing. 
That's what I really was looking forward to this season. This Sancho cutting down the wing, cutting on the outside and getting fizzing crosses into Ronaldo. He would have had a great, he would have had a field day. It would have been like an upgraded version of watching Valencia banging in balls to, Ronal to Rooney. Sorry. Remember that there was a period of like a couple of months where it was constantly Valencia sort of drilling crosses in and Ronaldo just getting on the end of it. Not Ronaldo, sorry, Rooney. Keep saying Rooney, Ronaldo. I wish we had Rooney. Um, that could be exactly what happened. I thought was going to happen this season with Sancho and Ronaldo, but it hasn't happened because Sancho's hardly played on the right wing. Just playing there, Ollie. Seriously, stop it. And Greenwood's been, you can see that Greenwood and Ronaldo don't really work together. Because Greenwood's got the self-belief and confidence to take the chances on himself, he's not really putting it on the plate for Ronaldo. And when you've got one of the greatest goal scorers of all time, you have to try and gear towards it. And that's why Sancho would compliment Ronaldo far more than Greenwood, clearly in terms of the style of their play. So that's my predicted 11. I think De Gea is going to stay in goal. A back five there of Sean Maguire, Varane and wan -Bissaka. I still think he's going to play Fred and McTominay in midfield. Prove me wrong, Sol Solskjaer. Let's find out. And up front, Rashford, Bruno, Sancho, and Ronaldo. But if it was my preferred 11, I would make a couple of changes. I've gone for Lindelof instead of Maguire, and I've gone for Van der Beek instead of McTominay. I'm always a big fan, and I always say it, maintain it, play players on form, and Maguire as captain simply has not done enough. I don't think it's going to happen, and dropping your captain in a game like this, where apparently your, your career is literally on the line, is not something that's going to happen, but I think it should happen, right? I think Lindelof has actually played okay this season when he's played. And with Varane there, I would like that partnership. I don't think it's going to happen, but that would be my preferred 11 that Maguire was dropped for this game. I think he does deserve it. I think United may, may be a better defensive shape with Lindelof and Varane. Just my two cents. Might be wrong. And I'm going to put Van der Beek in because you know what? Why not? Why not? Give me a reason why not now. That's all I need to say. There's plenty of justifications for everything else. But with, with Donny right now, I'm just looking at it going, why not? Play Fred there. He can be your busy, defensive-minded midfielder. Play Donny van der Beek alongside him. Why not, Ollie? It might work. You just don't know. Now, that's my predicted 11 and my preferred 11 for the game. Who do you think Solskjaer will start? Who do you think Solskjaer will leave out? Will he make any changes? You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. And also, let me know, do you genuinely think that Solskjaer does have these next three games to save his career? Or are you sort of in my chain of thought? The decision's already been made and the club are basically hanging Solskjaer out to dry publicly against Spurs, Atalanta and City to give the club more time to make their mind up. You let me know what you think in the comments below and who would you start? As I said, leave it in the comments.